Hello everyone, it's Shannon here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am so excited to be joining Jessica's 10K subscribers on YouTube video hop. Jessica is such an amazing artist and wonderful teacher and I couldn't be more thrilled for her. This is such a huge accomplishment. Today in my video, I'm going to share with you a few tips and tricks for doing selective inking with stencils. We're going to use this gorgeous stencil from Hero Arts to create two really fun cards. Let's start by taking a look at the Gradient Sky and Mountain Stencil from Hero Arts. As you can see, this stencil has different sections, and I want to color each one of those sections a different color. And I'm going to do a kind of a creative way to kind of mask off these uh, sections. I'm going to take a piece of copy paper, so like printer paper, thin paper, and I'm going to trace the top of the mountains, and I'm going to do the bottom section of mountains too. I do also trace kind of the under <laughs> the underside of the top, but I only need the top of each of these mountain ranges. So once I've traced those, and I'm putting the stencil back on because I did miss a couple of spots, once I've traced those with the pencil, I am then going to cut those out. I'm just going to follow along. This doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You're not creating like a mask that you would place over a stamped image, so it has to be perfect. We're actually just going to use this to kind of tuck underneath the stencil to just make it a lot easier to kind of section off or tape off off parts of the stencil um, with paper instead of using bunches of little tape. So we're going to actually use all three of those pieces and this remaining top part here I'm going to just cut in half so I have two kind of kind of straight edges. They're not perfectly straight because I just hand cut them but they they do have a pretty pretty straight line and I'm going to use all those scraps all those kind of masks that I created. The first thing I do is spray my stencil with uh, Pixie Spray. It just makes it a little bit sticky and tacky. And then I'll place it down onto an A2 panel of Nina Solar White cardstock. I'm then going to grab a piece of tape and just kind of tape that stencil in place. And then I'm going to grab the middle stencil here, right there in the middle. And I'm going to kind of tuck it in under the stencil, making sure I get that bottom edge because I'm going to start with the two bottom hills or two bottom mountains. So I want to make sure that that bottom of the mask is kind of tucked underneath that stencil and it's just a nice seamless kind of coverage between the stencil and then onto the paper. And then I'll use a couple pieces of tape to hold it in place. And I am using micropore tape which is a kind of like a medical tape. You could use washi tape or painter's tape. Any tape would really work here. I'm starting off just by ink blending these sections. These two first kind of mountain ranges I'm going to ink blend really dark and I am using caramel uh, uh, shadow or bold ink from Hero Arts. Once I've ink blended that, I'll then remove the tape, remove that little mask, and then I'm ready to kind of set it up for the next section, which, which is the next section of mountains. So this time I grabbed that top piece, a uh, top mask that I created. Again, kind of tucked that bottom edge underneath the stencil, right up against, right to the very edge, so it doesn't actually get into the area that I'm an ink blend. And then I grabbed the bottom um, mask and tuck that in over where I just ink blended those two mountain ranges. Use uh, tape to hold everything in place and now I'm ready to ink blend my next section. This time I'm using kind of a lighter color. This is pumpkin pie. I'm going to keep it kind of light here because these colors are pretty similar and um, especially on the camera here you'll see how they look um, after they dry a little bit. They almost look the same color but when I photograph them you'll see they're a little bit more uh, off but or a little bit more uh, contrast between them. So now that I finished ink blending that, I'm going to remove my mask, and now we're ready to start working on the sky. Now because the mountains kind of jet up into the sky, I am going to have to use some of those masks again. It is important here to note that I did quickly clean that stencil because there's still some residual ink, some of that pumpkin pie on there, and I don't want to get any of that into my sky. I want it to be nice and blue. So I'm going to grab that middle mask that I used at the very beginning, tuck it in. This time I'm going to go all the way up to the top of the mountains, make sure that edge is right up against the top of the mountains to protect them, keep them nice and clean, and then tape that in place. Then I'll grab one of my straight pieces, tuck that in, and I'm going to actually ink blend the two bottom sections of sky the same color, and I'm going to use soft pool shadow ink for that. This is a really nice, soft, pretty color, and I really like this, just this whole stencil design. I think it's going to be really fun to kind of create this ombre sky. I'm sticking with kind of blues here, moving from like 
kind of like a pool aqua blues to more deeper blues but it, it's still I think really going to be a pretty combo. So once I finished ink blending those two bottom sections of sky I'm now going to do each section of sky one at a time a different color. So I slid that straight edge up and I grabbed my second straight edge mask and I'm tucking it in here. I've kept that mountain mask in place because I still have a little bit of that mountain jetting up into the sky here. And for my next color, I'm going to ink blend Pool Party Reactive Ink, the super pretty pool color. I love it. So once I quickly finish ink blending that, I'm basically going to remove the tape again, just kind of a really repetitive process and remove the mountain. I'm done with my mountain masks now and now I'm going to stick with just my straight edge masks. So I'm going to move that bottom one up to be at the bottom of my next section and move the top one up to be at the top of my next section. So that one is now open and we're now going to ink blend this one blue raspberry reactive ink. So I actually picked out six ink colors for this for the sky. I started with pool colors and now I'm going to transition to more blue colors, more true blues. Now because I'm kind of switching to a new color, I'm going to carefully take my damp chamois here and carefully clean the stencil a little bit just so I don't drag some of that ink, some of that blue raspberry that's still on the stencil up into my new section because I want each one of these sections to be a new color. I want them to be a true new color. So I just finished that section uh, with Splash Reactive Ink. Now I'm going to slide my two masks up so I have my next section open. This one I'm going to ink blend in Cornflower Shadow Ink, a really pretty color. And once I finish that, I actually only have one more section to go and then I'm completely done with my ink blending. Now this, since this last section doesn't have anything at the top, I only need my bottom mask for this. So again, I'll tuck it in under the stencil, making sure that my my bottom landscape is nice and covered and then I'll ink blend that top bit with uh, Blue Hawaii uh, reactive ink. And once I finish that, again, my background is all done. So I'll now remove all the tape, remove the stencil, and you can see here we have this beautiful kind of abstract geometric uh, landscape. I really, really love how it turned out. I actually went ahead and did a second one. This one is in warm colors. So the first one was in cool. This one's in warm. The two mountains or the mountain section is the exact same colors that I used before, caramel and pumpkin pie. But for the top, I used lemon drop, apricot, tangerine, cotton candy, taffy, and rose matter. Now we're going to move on to my sentiments. I'm going to use this Sending Love stamp set from Hero Arts. This has some great linear sentiments and I just wanted something really clean and simple for these uh, landscape cards, keeping it kind of modern and cash here. Uh, I am doing some heat embossing, so I applied some anti-static powder, stamped the sentiments in uh, embossing watermark ink from Hero Arts, and then dipped them into some wine embossing powder and heat set with my heat tool. I also went ahead and cut those sentiments down to strips, and I also cut a three littler strips out of black cardstock because I'm going to stack those up to create some dimension so the sentiment has, the sentiment strip has some dimension. Before I do that though, I'm going to actually adhere my panels to to their A2 top folding white card bases. Now I did off camera trim these panels down, trim these landscape panels down about um, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. And that just creates a little border on the side and I think it's just a really nice kind of uh, a modern way to kind of uh, make it a little bit more interesting or make the card design a little bit more interesting than just having the landscape panel. So I just quickly stacked my three little strips of black cardstock, adhered my sentiment uh, strip on top, and now I'm just going to adhere this directly on to my uh, card front. So now that I have that one done, I will just repeat the process for my second sentiment. This is, second one is Hello friend. And again, uh, here hold those strips up so it has some dimension. You could definitely use um, foam tape if you prefer, but I like the I like the stacked cardstock because I am using scraps and I'm also not getting as much thickness, as much dimension as foam tape. Sometimes I feel like foam tape is a little too much dimension. And here are the finished cards. I'll hold them to the camera so you can get a good look.
This, of course, is our cool palette. I just love that beautiful blue sky. And here's our warm palette card. This one, we got a few more colors. We were able to get kind of yellow, orange, and pink in there. And I love how those warm colors play with the browns of the mountains. I so hope you found this uh, video helpful and you liked how these cards turned out. And if you have any questions about the products I used, please check out the links below in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.